Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm so glad you're able to join today. Bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We we'll bless his name. Our God is awesome. Our God is good. We give him all praise. We give him all glory. He's worthy of our praise. This morning, I just want us to just, you know, just love on him this morning. Appreciate the Lord. He's awesome in all his ways, the Bible says. And as we come into his presence, as we come in this morning, we just want to acknowledge him. We, we want to acknowledge who he is. We want to acknowledge all that he has done. We just don't come in. He's not our driver. And we say, God, do this. Take us there. Take us. You know, he is God. He is almighty. He is all sufficient. He is all powerful. Our God is great. And this morning, I just want us to just take this opportunity, you know, that he has given given us, you know, I always take it, um, you know, take it in the opportunity I have, you know, I don't take it for granted is as an honor It's a privilege just to come to him just to come to my father, and just to acknowledge him just to worship him, you know, every chance I have to let him know that he means the world to me, I appreciate that time, I don't take it for granted. So I encourage you this morning to just open up your mouth, you know, you're in his presence is your time to just love on your God is your time to brag about your God, whatever you want to say to him. It's like a child coming to the father or the mother. It's like, you know, they, they come to you. They, they, they don't rehearse anything. They just, they are they're themselves. They come and they just open up and they tell you, mommy, this. they tell you daddy that and they're themselves. And that's how we come to our God. You know, he is all sufficient, all powerful. God with us, Emmanuel, never leaves us nor forsakes us. So we ought to appreciate him, acknowledge him, acknowledge the work of God, acknowledge the work of the Holy Spirit, bless his name at all times, take the opportunity and just to love on him, worship him, lift him up. He said, if we lift him amongst men, he says he will lift and draw men unto him. And he said, if we will acknowledge him amongst men, he said he will acknowledge us before his father. Why don't you take advantage of this time and just love on your God and just bless his name. Bless <clears throat> Bless his name. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Bless his name. Bless his name. Lord, you are worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Just begin to talk to him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We bless your name. We lift you high, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift him up. Lift him up. Lift him up. Hallelujah. Lift him never before oh my soul lord i worship your holy name bless the lord of my soul oh my soul worship his holy name sing like never before oh my soul lord i worship your holy name as you're focusing on him this morning bless the lord of my soul oh my soul worship his holy name sing like never before oh my soul lord i worship your holy name 
give him praise. Just worship him. Just worship him. This is your time, your time with the Lord. Just speak to him. Shower on him. Speak something wonderful. Just whisper into his ears. Let your voice, let the sound you're making, let it be the sweetest sound. Acknowledge him this morning. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh, my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, Lord, I worship your holy name. Allow your spirit to worship oh, this morning. Bless soul. the Lord of my soul. Oh, my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, Lord, I worship your holy name. Truly, he's God. Truly, you are God, the great I am, the beginning and the end. He is the alpha and the omega. He is the bright and morning star. He is the lily of the valley. He is the one who is, who was, and is to come. He is God all by himself. He has no rival. He has no equal. Our God reigns forever and ever. There is none like our God. None can compare to him. He is God of God. He is Lord of Lords. He is King of Kings. There are lords, but he surpasses them. There are kings in this world, but he surpasses them. Who is like your God? Why don't you let him know this morning why your spirit is focused? That God, you mean the world to me. There is no one like you. No one can take your place. Oh, Father, how awesome you are. Your ways are so awesome, Lord. Father, how big, how great you are, oh God. I worship you, Lord. How great is our God. All oh, will sing it with our voices, Lord. We bless your name and we worship you, O God. We adore you and we magnify you, O God. Oh, God. Father, we oh, were not forced to come before you this morning. Lord. Oh, the Father, it's with our hearts, O God, filled with thanksgiving and a longing and a desire for you, O God. That's what brought us here, O God. And Father, we just want to appreciate you. You know, when we think about everything that you have done, Lord, Father, when we think about how far you brought us, O God, oh, Father, we say thank you. We don't take it for granted, Lord. You don't have to, but you always choose to, Lord. And so, Father, we bless your name. Thank you, Father, oh God, for being Jehovah Jireh. We thank you. You are God, our provider, for being our healer. Every time we needed you, you're always there. We thank you. Jehovah, God with us. Emmanuel, God with us. Oh, God, our creator. Father, how you, awesome and how wonderful you are. When I look around me, oh, God, when I look at your creation, oh, God, Father, oh, Lord, Father, I am beside myself. I ask like David, I say, who is like this God? I ask like David, what and and who am I that he is so mindful of me? Father, this morning, I want to give you praise. I want to worship you, Lord. Bless your name, oh God. From my heart, oh God, I came to give you praise. Father, receive it this morning. In the name of Jesus, I acknowledge you amongst men, oh God, that you are God. And you said, if you'll be lifted up above the earth, you will draw all men unto you, Lord. And Father, you will acknowledge me before your Father, Lord. And Father, I am not ashamed to declare that you are my God. I am not ashamed to tell of your goodness and your mercies. I am not ashamed to say our God reigns. Hallelujah. I bless your name this morning. While we are in the presence of the Lord this morning, I want you to take a few minutes. Maybe you have transgressed. Maybe there's this sin that so easily besets you that you're fighting with, you struggle with. Is a, is a struggle. Paul said, is a struggle. He said, I know the right thing to do, but in my heart, I want to do it. But there's this simple thing of mine. There's this war inside of me. As the more I want to do that thing, this thing rises up and it fights against me. And sometimes I lose it. But this morning, I thank God that there is mercy. I thank God. He said, when I come, it's I should come 
boldly because he already knows that when I come, sometimes I might miss it. And he says, when you do, he said, come back to me and ask for forgiveness. I will wash you clean. I will forgive your sins and I, your creator, will remember your sins no more. But we need to open our mouth and ask for that forgiveness. This morning, while you are in his presence, if you know that you are not a vessel that is presented before him as pure and blameless, while you are in this intimate um, atmosphere of worship of your God, why don't you take a few minutes and let him know, say, Father, this is what I have done. Not that he didn't know, not that he didn't see it, but he still said that you have to voice it out. You have to ask for forgiveness. Ask him right now, say, Lord, everywhere I've missed it, everywhere I've gone wrong. Father, please forgive me. The sin that so easily beset me. Father, please give me grace. As I'm in the throne this morning, Lord, I need grace to overcome. Oh God, talk to him this morning. The Bible made a promise to you. So why don't you hold on to that promise? It said if you confess your sins, as far as the east is from the west, he will remove your transgressions and he will remember your sins no more. If your father won't remember it anymore, how dare anyone won't remember it while you're here i want you to take that opportunity he says he will not answer the prayer of that man that harbors iniquity in their heart for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of god father we are here this morning lord asking oh god for purification for sanctification oh god we ask that the blood that was shed on the cross of calvary will wash us clean this morning as white as snow oh god oh father remove the dross oh god remove the things, oh God, that we have surrounded ourselves with, that don't give you praise, that does not lift you up, that does not please you, that pushes away the spirit of God in us. Oh God, this morning, I want you to wash me clean. I want you to remove those things, Lord. I want you to refine me as the... Um, Silver is refined in the furnace, oh God. I want you to make me, oh God, a vessel of honor. I want you to create in me a clean heart, a right spirit within me. And Father, while I'm here, I need grace, oh God, that I don't go back to these things, oh God. It's a war, oh God. I know your will and I want to do it. I need your grace, oh God, to continue in your way. In the name of Jesus, Father, I thank you because your word said, if I ask, it said you will forgive and you will remember it no more. Thank you for forgiving my sins this morning. In the name of Jesus, we bless your name, oh God. We glorify you and lift you up. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. While we're in his presence this morning, acknowledging him and just lifting him up, reverencing in his presence. This is what we long to do, a desire just to be here. Hallelujah, Father, we lift you up. I want you to, in a few minutes, I want you to remember the body of Christ. I want you to thank the Lord for what he's doing in our midst. The Lord is working in our midst. The Lord has revived us. The Lord is reviving us. The Lord is moving in us. I can see it and I can feel it that the Lord is shaping up and changing in the body of Christ. I want you to thank him for the work he has started. I want you to thank him for stirring up the gifts in us. I want you to thank him for stirring up that love in us. I want you to thank him for stirring up the strength in us. I want you to thank him for stirring up that realization that we need to be next to him. No, we need to be very close to him. We need to be in a place of intimacy with him. I want you to thank him for bringing the awareness of the times of the season to us. This is not the time to play with him. This is not the time to play around. This is the time to be serious. This is the time where we're threading upon the valley of decision. Everyone is going to make the decision themselves. The church will not make it for you. The church is not building, it's the body. So people will not make the decision for you. As you're threading on the valley of decision, this is a time of our lives, a time in history where it is just you. You need to make the decision which way that you will go. It says, I have given you life and death, but it says choose life that it may go well with you. Father, I know even as he says, choose life. He will never force you. But I know that you came because you know you've decided to follow Jesus. Though none go with you, you've decided it must be him. And so while we're here, I want you to thank him for that awareness that he's stirring up in you. You are the church. We are the church. And he's stirring up that awareness in us. As he reminded every church in the book of Revelation, he said, I hold this against you. This is my problem with 
this church. This is my problem with that church. It was talking about you. It was talking about me. And I thank him this morning that he's brought that awareness to us that there is a need to be intimate this year. There is a need to be close to him this year. And why don't you open your mouth to thank him? Say, Father, we thank you, oh God, for the things that you're birthing in us. We thank you, oh God, for reviving the things that have been dead in us. Thank you, oh God, for reviving the gift that you put in us. Thank you, oh God, for stirring up those gifts, oh God, knowing what they are used for this time. Thank you, oh God, for causing our eyes to open. Thank you, oh God, for the effectiveness, oh God, that you brought to us. Thank you, oh God, for opening up the eyes, oh God, of your body, oh God, to see that we're not sitting back and waiting on anyone to make a change. We're not waiting on the government. We are waiting on the Lord. Thank you, oh God, for bringing that awareness of prayer. Open your mouth and thank him as the Spirit gives you utterance. Thank him for what he started. Thank him for what your spirit eye sees that he's taking us to. And thank him because when he starts to walk, the Bible says he who has begun a good work is faithful to complete it. Why don't you thank him? Because he is faithful. He will complete the work he started. We need to be together. We need to stand together this way. We might not have it right. We might not all have it right. We might not be exactly where he wants us to be. But we're taking steps. Why don't you thank him? The God that has started it. He is able to keep us on this path. That we will be joined together in unity. In one accord and love. Open your mouth and ask him. As he gives you utterance this morning. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we thank you, Lord. We bless your name, oh God. Father, you have started this work of unity. You have started this work of love in your body, oh God. The awareness, oh God. Father, it could not be more important than this time in history that we are living in right now, oh God. The necessity and the importance, oh God, of being one, of being united, of showing love to one another, oh God. Your word said that is the only way that the world we know we belong to you. They are not looking at our church building. Neither are they looking at ourselves. They are looking at the love we show to one another. They are looking at the love we show to the world. Oh God, thank you for what you started, oh God. Thank you, oh God, for the awareness, oh God. Thank you, oh God, for the unity, oh God. Thank you, oh God, for the bond, oh God. Thank you for the court, Lord. The Bible said the court of three is not easily broken. This work, oh God, is with you. And Father, thank you because our eyes are open in the name of Jesus oh Father Lord I know that we are not all where we ought to be but Father I thank you because I feel it in my spirit that we are no longer where we used to be Rabbi Shetayanda, you have started moving us oh God I know oh Lord many have already raised their hands many have put their hands on the plow and they say Father I am going to be the change Rabbi Shetayara, you are not waiting for anyone you're waiting for me and I've told you Lord I'm ready this year Rabbi Reketaya that walk oh God that change oh God I have been talking about Lord I see it happening in me and I'm ready to be used this year Father I thank you for what you're already doing and I'm so excited Lord where you're taking us oh God we ask for grace oh God that we will keep our eyes on the mark and Father do exactly what you called us oh God because you are an effective God a God of order, oh God. Thank you, oh God, for what you're doing, oh God, in the church. We bless you, Lord, because we're going higher this year, Lord. Father, you are going to use us effectively in this world, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Glory be to your name, Lord. Hallelujah, we honor you. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. I want you to look around. Just... Whether you've closed your eyes or your, your eyes are open, I want you to look, not in the physical, I want you to look around in the spirit. I want you to look around what you see. There's trouble all around. There's trouble everywhere. I want you to look around with your spiritual eyes what's going on. I want you to begin to thank God because your God is bigger than that. I want you to thank God what he's going to do this year using you because you're no longer one to sit in a pew and just wait for people to do it. You're one that already stood up. You put your hand on the plow and you cannot turn back. Bible says he who puts his hand on the plow and turns back is not fit for the kingdom of God. Every one of us are fit by the grace of God. As we put our hands on the plow this, this morning, I want you to think 
with your spiritual eyes and just look around. Look around the troubles in United States of America. Look around the troubles in Europe. Look around the troubles in the continent of Africa. It's all around this world. Everywhere you look around, there is one problem or the other. But I tell you, your God is bigger than it. While you're there focusing, I want you to begin to look at your God as the creator of heaven and earth. He is the God over all this world. The Bible says he's seated above on his throne and he uses the earth as his footstool. My God, I know this God is bigger than anything we can face. I want you to begin to give him praise. Say, Father, we thank you for the troubles we see. It's just an opportunity for us to pray. It's just an opportunity for us to lift our God up. It's just an opportunity for, for the world to know who our God is. It's just an opportunity for us to come together and to pray. The Bible says he's coming back. When he comes back, the one thing that he has in his mind is that, well, I find faith on earth. Ah, my brothers and my sisters, how do we declare that we believe except we have struggles to push through? Why don't you begin to thank him? Say, Father, this is not bigger than you. This is nothing before you. I'm standing up this morning and I'm saying I'm the one that will pray, oh God, until we see a change. We will push in prayer, oh God, until we see a change. Oh, Father, you will show yourself strong and mighty. Father, the world has come to understand it, that nobody can change anything for us, that nobody Nobody can fix anything for us. Nobody can heal the land for us. Except God. Except he comes in. Except he steps in. Except you pray and give him that room to come in. And say, Father, show forth. Except he does it. Then nothing will happen. Why don't you thank him as an opportunity for God, for you to display the awesomeness of your God. He's walking through you. He's walking through me. Thank him. Thank him. Say, Father, we thank you. We bless your name. We see what's going on but we see that our God is bigger than it and we see the hand of God as we pray and push through. Lord I know that you are more than able this chaos oh God I know you're more than able to put it back in order in the name of Jesus cause us to keep pushing in prayer in the name of Jesus Thank you Father Glory to your name Hallelujah just thank him Thank him for what he's done this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Just thank him. Thank him. Give him praise. Give him glory. Thank you, Father, oh God. Thank you for all that you've done. Thank you for what you're doing right now as we're speaking. Thank you, oh God. We bless your name, oh God. Thank you for the body of Christ. Thank you, oh God, for every one of us, oh God. Father, that stood up for you, oh God. Thank you for the things that we see, oh God. It's not bigger than our God that we know that our God is walking through right now. As long as the church is praying, our God is more than able. Give him praise, give him glory. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Father, we just want to give you praise. We want to give you glory and honor, oh God. While we're in your presence, Father, we thank you, oh God. We acknowledge you, oh God. Thank you for always being with us, oh God. Thank you for always taking care of us, being a protector, being a provider, oh God, being a healer, oh God. Father, my prayer is that every need, oh God, that any of your children brought before you, oh God, on this prayer line or together, oh God, I believe in the corporate anointing, oh God. Father, Lord, I pray that you will touch every need, oh God. Meet your children at the point of their need in the name of Jesus. Lift up the downtrodden, oh God. Oh, Father, raise up justice, oh God, for the oppressed, oh God. Oh, Father, please, oh Lord. Give hope, oh God, to those that need to use us as vehicles this week, oh God. Father, to bring your word and bring your hope to one in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father Lord. We commit the rest of the service into your hands. It's not our way. It's your way, Lord. Father, talk to your children, oh God. Cause us to be hearers and doers of your word. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Bless your name. Hallelujah. Come on, lift up your voice and worship him. Hallelujah. Come on, thank lift up your voices and just begin to worship him. Say, come on, Hallelujah. lift up the thank you, glory, Jesus. lift up your name. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to you. Lift up his name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. up your name with our hearts full of praise be exalted oh Lord 
When the angels opened heaven, they declared Hosanna in the highest. Yeah. Because born to us was the king, the deliverer, the salvation, our healer, the only one who can save. And this is a time when we need him most. Yes. Hosanna in the highest. Hallelujah. That's why we lift up his name. No matter what you're going through this morning. No matter what your week feels like. No matter what 2020 did with you. I want you to know, lift up his name. He's the one who's got the power to save. He's got, he's got the power to heal. He has power to deliver. Amen. Let the spirit of the Lord begin to work in you this morning as we worship him.
belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. Oh.
so you can use me. Hallelujah. He 
is a mighty warrior. Mighty warrior. Reign in battle. Jehovah is your name.
Come on, give the Lord a hand of worship. He deserves the glory. That song is really straightforward. It says, he deserves the glory. You know, the one thing that God is very clear about is that he will never share his glory with anybody. There's nothing that deserves God's glory. There's nothing that can challenge his sovereignty. There's nothing that can lift itself high and compare itself or contend with him. And so we come before him in worship this morning. I want you to know he deserves that worship. David said this, if I had a thousand tongues, if I had a way to praise him with the voice of a million angels, if I could stand upon the pinnacle of the universe and, and shout aloud with a voice that could be heard from all planets, from all solar systems, across all humanity and all creation, I want you to know that even in that, even in that, he deserves more. Praise God. So I want you to get, get your shout ready this morning. We're going to glorify God. Uh, praise him with his trumpet. Praise him with a cymbal. Praise him with your hands. Praise him with your best worship. You know, when you listen and you, you hear other people worshiping, sometimes you, you can't understand what's got them, what's gotten into them. But if you know how good your God has been, if you know what God has done for you, if you understand where he is, what he's doing in your life, I want you to just begin to give him a 30 seconds of praise this morning, the best praise you could ever give him. Come on, lift up your voice and just say, thank you, Jesus. Give him a wave offering. Give him a praise, oh God. Give him a zamar. If you've got a tambourine in your hand, just beat it. If you can shake something, just shake it. Just begin to lift up your voice. You've got voices. You've got voices. God has given you a voice. God has given you a voice. Lift up your voice and, and say, thank you, Jesus. Clap your hands unto the Lord. Lift up your hands, all ye gates. Be lifted up because the King of glory is coming in. Just worship him. Say, he is my King of glory. Oh, the rocks won't cry out in my place. God has been faithful in my life. I will worship him for who he is. I will worship him for what he's done. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Just say thank you, Jesus. Come on. Uh, what has God done for you? 2020 is a year of, uh, of, of, of challenges, filled with challenges, but an opportunity for testimonies. And this morning, somebody said, I, I'm going to worship him. He deserves it. He deserves it. He deserves it. We're going to go into the word of God this morning. I want you to know that this morning God is calling us into a place of revival, a place of revival. There's a revival that's moving all over the planet this morning. Yes. Uh, you know, I struggled with this when God began to speak this word into my spirit because we've been waiting for his promise. He made this promise. He said he will pour out that spirit again upon all flesh. There's an outpouring that's happening right now. It's been an incredible start to an incredible year. Somebody said, yes. I don't know what you're going through. <laughs> uh, if you listen to the news, it's pretty scary. Uh, our, our news tells us that we're in unprecedented times. Uh, what people are going through, what people are experiencing, how much hardship your community is under, your loved ones, your friends and family, and all the challenges they're facing. Uh, some people don't even know what's going to happen tomorrow. I don't think anybody really knows what will happen tomorrow. Uh, but it's a time of incredible duress. Uh, but in the same moment, I'm saying that this is uh, a year that's been off to an incredible start. Huh. We've been waiting for this revival a long time. When we think of revival, we often imagine what's been branded as revivals, the big events. Maybe they're big tent meetings. Maybe there are lots of people, seas of people, uh, big worship, 
you know, lots of people in the front of the altar. And uh, I, I remember those glory days. I loved it. You know, love to see uh, us getting a chance to come to God together because God is calling us to come to him and to come to him with one voice. God is calling on this generation to come to God and to cry out aloud to him with one heart. Um, but but many, many times when we think of revival, we have to see it in one place. It has to look familiar. It has to look like something we recognize. There's got to be an experience we can identify with. And, and it's been such a hard time in 2020 and 2021 to even imagine what would look like that again. Uh, waves of similar outpourings of the spirit, miracles, signs, witnesses, testimonies. Um, but I want to challenge you that this is the revival. This is the beginning of the revival right here. Praise God. See, as we've been praying, we spent the whole week in prayer as we crossed into 2021. Uh, many of you have joined us to pray and seek the face of God. Uh, but one of the things that God has been very deliberate about is that 2021 is a year of intimate revival. It's as though we can't pray that thing to be any different. The more we pray, the more we see what God is saying, the more we realize that God is very deliberate about an intimate, personal experience with him knowing him intimately so there's a time for everything and in this season as we continue to seek god we're going to begin to understand why god is working on intimacy A revival that happens in our most intimate encounter with God. If it's going to be an intimate encounter with God, it's not going to be led by someone public. You won't need a microphone to hear the voice of God. You won't need a prophet on the outside to prophesy to you what God is saying about you. But when you're talking about an intimate, personal revival, uh, it's not going to be a convincing message, a prolific speaker. Uh, it's going to be led by a personable, personal, insatiable appetite, desire to be close to God. Yes, that means that on the inside of you, you're going to feel this hunger, this desire, this longing uh, for something that cannot be satisfied except in the presence of the Lord. See, if God doesn't do this, we're going to be stranded. We won't even know him. We'll know each other. See, I, in this 2020, I've had a chance to reflect on a couple things. You know, some people can't worship God without uh, somebody uh, leading us with worship. Someone's got to sing the song. Somebody's got to have uh, the coordination of, of the chords and somebody's got to have the drums and, and it doesn't feel like worship until we're in that big church experience. Intimacy. How can we have intimacy with God when we've never come to him personally? Some people have struggled in 2020 because how do I pray when I don't have a prayer point for the week? When there's no gathering where the pastor will tell me you got to pray these three things. Uh, how can I how can I feel the spirit when somebody can't beat the drums and somebody can't lead us into that place of higher worship and then the spirit of God begins to move? 2020 has been a year where all the things that we have learned to depend on to experience God have been removed. Now what? 
See, a revival means something that was once alive uh, and began to wilt and to die begins to come alive again. Are you with me? And that's why we cry, Lord, revive us, O God. Because we long to be alive. We long to thrive. We long to see the renewal of life, of the spirit flowing through our innermost parts. Revival this year, God is calling it a personal, intimate revival. Personal, intimate revival. This year is going to have moments where you'll have to address some unseated feelings, where you'll have questions that nobody else can answer. And those questions will drive you right into the presence of God. Twenty twenty one. God is shifting our dependency from form to spirit. God wants you to worship him. God wants you to experience him. God wants you to depend on him with your whole spirit. See, in the spirit is not emotions. See, if we go to the heart, we're going to find emotions. It's so much easier to worship God when your heart is broken. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Uh, when you're down on your knees crying because life is shattered, it's so easy to worship God. It's so much easier to worship God. That's why it's hard to worship God when you're riding high. Uh, when things are going so well, you don't even have to think. You don't have to pray. You're just rolling with the punches. It's hard. But when life breaks, you get on your knees and you begin to cry out to God. That's emotion. But God wants you to have a spiritual dependency on him in 2021. Daniel had an intimate personal revival. Huh. Yeah. There was no gathering in the times of Daniel. They were exiles. There was no temple. There was no priests. There were no sacrifices. Daniel lived in a foreign land under the rule of a foreign authority. And he was a servant, a eunuch. He had very few choices except for the ones he could make in his heart. And Daniel... He was a youth. The Bible tells us he was caught in the balance where he was experiencing the troubling outcomes of something that were the consequences of what he didn't choose. Daniel was caught in a sweep. Where in Daniel chapter 1 verse 3, the Bible says, the king instructed Ashpenaz, the master of the eunuchs, to bring some of the children of Israel. Children. They were children. Daniel was a child. Brought into the king's court to be trained to do things that had nothing to do with things of the gospel. But somewhere on the inside of Daniel, there was a desire on the inside of him to seek God. See, Daniel was deported to a foreign city. We know the story. Everything that would make him fall away from God was surrounding him. Nothing familiar. He didn't have his parents to instruct him. 
He didn't have the forms of worship. There was no more Sunday services, so to speak. They didn't have temple prayers. He couldn't put on his prayer shawl and go to the walls of Jerusalem and pray and wait for the Messiah. There were no sacrifices. There were no songs of victory, songs of deliverance. They were now in a foreign land. All the people who were around him were Medes and Persians and people who had no regard for the God that he knew. He was young, so he could have just become a teenager and lived the life of a teenager. He was surrounded with foods that were many times defiled foods that, that were not pure as the word of God expected us to treat food. As God instructed the Jews to hold themselves with purity standards when it came to food, they had to not eat a food that was offered to idols. They couldn't eat some things because God told them that was unclean. And, and Daniel was surrounded with the luxuries of a king. They were given the king's portion. There was no preacher. There was no youth pastor. There was no children's ministry teacher to remind Daniel of the ways of the Lord. Nobody sang to them the Ten Commandments and the expectations of God. No, all he had was what he remembered and what was in his heart. There was no podcast. There were no e-readers to read him a book to remind him of the ways of God. There were no three-step processes to stay holy. But Daniel had a desire in his heart. Desire, say desire. Uh, the desire... was in his heart. Daniel desired God enough in himself that that desire for God ignited an intimate personal revival. I don't know if you understand what I just said. See, the reason why Israel was exiled was because of national disobedience and idolatry. God judged the whole nation Jeremiah warned them that God would punish their disobedience. God would punish their adulterous hearts. God will punish their fornicating and their worshiping idols. And God drove them utterly out of their own land and deported them into another kingdom. And they would stay there. And God said that they would stay there and another generation would be born in captivity. So there was no revival for the whole nation. That was not the punishment. But in the midst of this deportation, in the midst of all of this exile, Daniel had such a desire in his heart that it would ignite the opposite in him. The hardship that was meant to punish all of Israel would draw Daniel closer to God. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying, but in 2021, all the hardship around you that will make other people's lives difficult is going to draw your heart closer to God if your heart is filled with the desire for God. Desire. Daniel desired him. And that desire ignited an intimate revival. Daniel chapter 1 verse 8. The Bible says this. Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's delicacies, nor with the wine that the king drank. He desired in his heart that he would not defile himself. He desired God more than the food that was good, than the barbecues and, 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 and the special uh, trimmings and, and, the, and the delicacies and the sweets and, and all the desserts and even the sweet drinks and the wines. He said, no, no, no. I love God and I, I, that's all I want to do is just I want God in my heart. Can, it, can I skip these meals? 
He had a desire in his heart that was stronger than his appetite. The love for God in him was more satisfying than the taste that he would taste in his mouth. And so he made a decision that he desired God and this was better for him than the things that look like luxury. Can I ask you something this morning? What do you desire? And from that desire, what decision have you made? See, somebody made this opportunity, took the opportunity to ask Jesus, say, what is the most important commandment? What matters to God the most? They asked it to Jesus. Do you remember what Jesus said? He said, you got to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your might, with all your strength. Love God. Desire him. That desire for God. That desire for God. That passion in your heart for God will drive you to decide some things. And if you just manage to live by the desire for God in your heart, you will ignite a personal revival that in the midst of hardship in the world around you, that God will open heaven and cause you to know him. To know him. To know him. Paul, after all the experiences he'd had and all the things that he had seen, all the miracles that God had done through him, he said this, he said he had counted all as lost for one thing. He said that I may know him, that I might know him and the power of his resurrection. That's not miracles and that's not all sorts of the exciting fireworks part of Christ, but to understand what it means to be delivered. That's what resurrection represented. That everything that had a legal right over us, God had signed away that right uh, and broken his chains over us and set us completely free. Completely free. A free man. Your chains are broken. Your past is canceled. Your debts are paid off. You don't owe anybody anything. All you have is freedom, the power of his resurrection to take away the curse of the law that hangs over the head of humanity. The power of his resurrection to bring healing into our broken bodies so that even if all the symptoms and all the tests show us that our bodies are failing, we have this eternal hope that God who raised G Lazarus from the dead, the same spirit that stirred Jesus to touch the, ca the casket of the widow of Nain's son, the same spirit that touched the eyes of the blind, the word said in the book of Matthew chapter 14, that everyone who touched the hem of his garment received their healing. That's the power that raised him from the dead, the power of his resurrection. It dwells in me also. And and the word of God says that that same power will quicken my mortal body so that no matter what I'm going through, my hope is not in vain that God can heal. The power of his resurrection. That I may know him. When you know the power of his resurrection, you see something that is irreparably broken. There's no way to mend it back together. And that sort of looks like the relationship between humanity and God. But God sent his son so that through the son, we would have eternal life and we would be once again one with the father.
And Jesus, as he was raised from the dead, introduced us to the Father as sons. How do we know that? The Bible says, to them who believed, to them he gave the right to be called the sons of God. The power of his resurrection is the power to redeem and the power to reconcile what was broken, to redeem what was lost. The decision you make in your heart will drive you to make a commitment. This year, God is going to be known intimately by anyone who seriously desires to know him. I say that again. And people think that God is just going to force everybody to know him. You know, God doesn't operate like that. He operates by opening himself to anyone who desires him. The Bible says if you seek him, you will find him with this clause, if you seek him with all your heart. If you seek him half-heartedly, you won't find him. See, God looks at the heart. God is not impressed with our actions. I couldn't build God a building fancy enough. All the materials that we can find, you build a building out of gold, maybe pave the roads with titanium, set up the building with uh, all sorts of diamonds and, and, and the columns and the pillars are made of precious stones. It might cost the whole world's worth of treasure to build it, but I want you to know it's nothing compared to his kingdom. You couldn't impress God. You can't. You don't have anything that can impress him. My actions don't impress him. My manifestation of the spirit doesn't impress him. I can fast and pray all my life, and it's not going to impress him. It's not, it's not that God doesn't like to see me praying. It's that I am not impressing him. All of that is just opening the door for me to receive him more. But what God wants to see is, can I give him my whole heart? Whole heart. Some people make resolutions, but this is not one of them. I don't want you to go and make a resolution. See, resolutions are funny. The moment you make them, you've already broken them. You say, 2021, I'm going to make sure I run every day. That's going to be the day you're not running. And I, they say a resolution is the reason why we fail at them is because we set up such a standard that it's a must not fail, which is impossible to keep. But you can make an effort. You can make a desire, a heart's intent to do more, to love God more, to spend more time with him and to go deeper and to not be satisfied with the surface, to experience God, to express him, to love him, to desire him in a whole new way. God will respond to that. And Daniel said, I'm not eating this stuff. Please, please, Ashpenaz, please just give me some water. Give me some salads. Give me some fruits. I don't need the wine. I don't need the steaks. Please don't give me the king's burgers. I don't need his turkeys. I don't need the shanks and the shoulder cuts and the tri-tips. Just give me some, some salads. Give me some simple things and a little bit of water and, and I'll be fine. And Ashpenaz said, you know what will happen to me if the king sees you looking like you, you've been fasting? I'm supposed to take care of you. If you look dried up, if you start to look uh, haggard, you look like you've been tortured. If you look like I'm keeping you in, in, a, uh, in, a, in, in, a, in an encampment, a slave camp, the king will have my head. Daniel said, please give me 10 days. Let me choose my food 10 days and then test, test me and see. 10 days later. Daniel and his, I don't know, I, I won't say it's a ketogenic diet, but whatever Daniel was eating was good. And, and um, his cheeks were full. He was looking good. And Ashpenaz said, you keep doing what you're doing because it's working. Praise God. And God blessed Daniel. Why? Because of his heart. Do you think God was eating Daniel's portion? Did Daniel find a dove to carry the stakes to heaven? and feed God, and then God blessed him back? 
No, it was the consecration, the choice, the decision to set himself apart and just choose God over the things that are in front of him and choose God. I don't know what decisions you have to make this year, but God will give you a chance to choose him. Many people are going to compromise. Many people are going to mix up their life. Many people are going to, you know, nobody's seen me anyway. And do a little bit of this, a little bit of that. But God, God said, if you would just choose him, if you will honor him with your choice, he will do something that will show you that he honors your heart. Yeah. The year of personal revival. It's going to start in the heart. The decision you make in your heart will ignite a revival in your spirit that will consume your life. See, after all of this salad and good eating that Daniel was doing, verse 17, chapter 1, God responds to Daniel. And the Bible says that his decision carried his friends with him. And Bible says, verse 17, as for these four men, God gave them knowledge and skill in all literature, wisdom, and Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Look at this. I don't know if you ever realized this. If Daniel didn't decide for God in his heart, he would never have the gift to interpret dreams. That gift came in response to Daniel's decision to set himself apart and choose God and desire him. See, the gift that came from this moment that seemed flippant. I mean, how would you decide? I mean, steak is nice. This is buffet. I mean, let's eat all we want. This is the good stuff. This is, this is the Wagyu, the Wagyu kind of steaks imported from Australia. The imported from, I mean, these are the good stuff aged and dried, you know, the kind of stuff that'll cost you a good $500 a plate to eat. Japanese steak. My goodness. But this seemingly foolish decision opened the door for God to give Daniel a gift he could never buy. Daniel paid for his gift with God through dedication in his heart. I want you to know that no matter what you go through, when you dedicate your heart to God, God will respond with the blessing you could never afford. Look at this. Where else did God respond by blessing someone with wisdom and the word of God? The Bible tells us that Solomon inherited his father's kingdom. And Solomon began to pray when he realized the enormity of the responsibility upon him. He said, God, please, your people are too many. Your standard is too high. Please, God. Give me wisdom. Grant me the ability to not offend you. Open my understanding to know you. Daniel, uh, Solomon was the only king recorded in the scriptures. He wasn't a prophet. He wasn't a priest. He was the only king recorded that his prayer caused God to answer by fire. A king. God blessed Solomon with so much wisdom. The Bible says nobody has had wisdom like Solomon before him or after him. One of a kind, heaven's, heaven's magnitude of wisdom. Look at what God said to Daniel. Bible says God gave them knowledge and skill in all literature. These guys were smarter than their teachers when God was done blessing them. They couldn't find books they didn't understand. They couldn't pose mathematic problems they couldn't solve. They had the ability to look at physics and explain it. They could explain the root cause of earthquakes. They understood the seismic patterns before there was ever any documentation of Richter scales. They could tell you what would cause a volcano. They understood skill and knowledge in all literature. They could explain anything the bible says but for daniel notice daniel started this problem 
But for Daniel, God gave him an additional gift, which was understanding of all visions. And dreams. Knowledge, skill, wisdom, and understanding was God's response to Daniel's desire for him. Praise God. Desire, the gateway to your personal intimate revival with God. The next part is prayer. Uh, there's some experiences that you cannot have without prayer. Your kindness can't fix everything. Uh, there's some things you can't call a friend for. Uh, you just have to go to God. See, and as powerful as Nebuchadnezzar the king was, uh, and as powerful as Nebuchadnezzar the king was, Uh, he had a problem. He didn't know what to do. See, one night he was sleeping and he had a dream. And in that dream, he saw something so real and so troubling. He couldn't understand it. He didn't know what would happen. He didn't know what was in front of the future ahead. He didn't know what, 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 what was this supposed to all mean. And he called all the wise men. He called all the astrologers. He called all the departments of literature, all the departments of, 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 of geniuses, and called them all, all the people who were wise in the land, sorcerers and Chaldeans and uh, all, all of them. He, he, said, he, said, he said they stood before him and he said, I had a dream. And this dream troubles me. Bible says the spirit was so troubled that his sleep left him. After this dream, he was an insomniac. The king couldn't sleep. He was afraid to wake up in that dream again because it was so terrible. It was such a bad dream. And the wise man said, now tell us your dream so we can interpret it. He said, no way. I'm not saying that dream. If you're going to interpret that dream, you're going to know my dream yourself and tell me what it means. And everybody said, how, how, how do we get inside your dream and know it so we can translate it? I mean, we can only translate dreams. How do we do that? And the king said, if you don't give me an answer to this dream, every one of you will be dead. And Daniel said, wait, hold on. I know a God who knows all mysteries. Give me some time. Can I have some time? King said, I give you some time. Daniel said, great, let me go and talk to my God. Uh, Bible says in verse 17, then Daniel went to his house, chapter 2, verse 17. Then Daniel went to his house, and he told his friends, and they agreed that they would seek the face of God, the God of heaven, concerning this secret, so that they would not die. Then he went to sleep. I don't know if you see what's going on there. They threatened to kill them. They threatened to kill them. Daniel went home and he prayed and he went to bed. Hallelujah. You know, the only way you can do that is if you trust somebody. If you trust a prayer, I'm going to spill into trust. We're running out of time here. But Daniel believed God. He prayed. And uh, he woke up. He woke up. And the Bible says, verse 19, then the secret was revealed to Daniel in a night vision. So Daniel blessed the God of heaven. 
And he said this, verse 23, I thank you and I praise you, O God of my fathers, for you have given me wisdom and might and have made known to me what we asked of you. In other words, God, you answered our prayer, for you have made known the king's demand. Prayer opens a gateway to know God beyond the realm of what is written about him. I don't know if you understand me. If you ever read a biography about somebody, the person who lived with them can write dozens of volumes more than what's contained in that condensed biography. You know why? Because they know him. If you get to know God, you, he will reveal to you secret things that nobody has ever experienced about him. It has never been written. He'll demonstrate himself in ways that nobody could ever express. And you'll search the scriptures and you'll see that there's no contradiction because it is revelation of him. Are you with me? That's how God works. Prayer opens the gateway to know God. You begin to have perspectives of him that are based on revelation. I want you to know that he wants you to know him. Yeah. He's been waiting for you to draw close enough to desire enough for him to reveal the mysteries of who he is to you so that you can understand the way he works. That's why Moses had such an encounter with God. Bible says that before Moses, God spoke in riddles. But with Moses, God presented himself to Moses face to face and caused Moses to know him intimately. Through prayer. A prayer is that gateway that teaches you that he is a revealer of deep secrets. Verse 22. And Daniel said, he said he changes the times and seasons. Verse 21. I don't know if you ever understood that. He's not just God and there are times and seasons. That one God spoke to Solomon. To everything there's a time. To everything there's a season. Every purpose under heaven is governed by times and seasons. Yes. But I want you to know that God is not forced to abide by times and seasons. He's God over the times and seasons. And Daniel said in verse 21 that he changes the times and he changes the seasons. Whatever you're going through, uh, the word of God speaking to you today is that if you just draw close to God through prayer. He's the God that can change the times and he's the God that can change the seasons. See, I'm done. Desire God. Draw close to him in prayer. But we've already talked about trust. See this. It is impossible for you to be facing a death sentence tomorrow. And under today's form of Christianity, you go to bed. Now you're going to stay up all night praying and fasting. But I, I want to ask you this. If you're up all night praying and fasting, can God speak to you through a dream? Hmm. Can I ask you this? If this dream that the king had troubled him enough to cause him to go into insomnia, and the king is threatening to have your head over that dream, the only way you will sleep, actually sleep, even if you go to bed, is if you trust God, that God will answer you. Are you with me? I want to challenge you today that this personal revival, this experience of God requires you to trust him. When you trust God, you trust him with things that terrify others. God wants us to trust him with our whole heart, with our whole life. 
There's a blessing that comes with this. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, 7 and 8. The Bible talks about this being, this is how it will be for those who trust in him, for those who love him, for those who live by him. It said you will be like a tree planted by the streams of water. Your leaves will be green. Your life will experience life. That means you're being revived. Are you with me? Everything around you may dry out, but you're going to be like a tree planted by water. God wants to have you go through a personal revival. That means it's not happening to everybody around you. It's just you. Uh, you're an island with God if you'll open your heart to him. Everybody's welcome. The whole world around you can join you, but it'll still be a personal revival because nobody's getting there because someone dragged them along. You've got to get there on your own, in your heart, in your heart. Can you love God enough? Uh, let's just bow our heads in prayer. I want you to join me this morning as we pray. Say, Father, Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray this morning that you will give us a personal revival experience, a personal encounter. Father, we need that personal encounter. We need that deep personal revival. Father, we desire you just like Daniel desired you. We desire you just like Daniel desired you. Lord, I don't want to mess myself up with all the things going on in the world. I don't want to indulge in all the things that look satisfying, all the things uh, that will cause me to bend one way and compromise. Some of these things don't even look like a problem. It's just a matter of personal choice. But Lord, in my personal choice, I still choose you. I honor you. Just pray that prayer. God, help me to honor you. Help me to give you my whole heart, my whole life, unwavering passion for God. Somebody praying this morning, say, God, I long to pray. I've heard people pray, and it sounds like giants. It sounds like they were trained in prayer school. I don't even know how to pray. I want you to know that Jesus taught us simple prayers. He didn't teach us complicated prayers. See, when you come before God, all he wants to do is come before him, open your hearts, speak to him, have a conversation. You don't need training for that. Just tell him what's on your heart. He begins to reveal to you mysteries. He begins to draw you close. He begins to teach you how to pray more. Just say, Lord, I desire to pray. I desire to be close to you through prayer. Let the prayers I pray open a gateway over my life in the name of Jesus. Let's pray that. And lastly, you just pray, say, God, I want to trust you. I don't want to live a life where it's hit and miss. I trust you today. I miss it tomorrow. God, I want to trust you. I want to be able to sleep knowing that you would do what you said you would do. I want to believe you. I want to live that trust out loud because I know you're faithful. Your word says, my covenant will I not break, nor will I alter that which proceeds from my mouth. What you have said, you will do. Teach me to trust you. In Jesus' name. Uh, somebody out there this morning as we're praying together says, I don't even know him. All of these things you're saying, I mean, I wish I could engage because it sounds great. I mean, I really want to, but I don't even know him. I don't know where to start. I want you to know knowing God is so straight. It's just an invitation. His invitation has been open to you all along. Now you just got to respond to the RSVP. And how does that response go? Jesus said, whoever would believe him would have eternal life. So we pray this prayer to respond to Jesus' invitation. We say, Jesus, I believe you in my heart that you are the salvation. You are the deliverer. You are the Messiah the son of God sent to bring salvation. And I receive you with my whole heart, oh God. 
Let your word bless my life. Let your spirit dwell in my heart. In Jesus' name. That's all you needed. From now on, God will continue to engage with you and show you who he is because you have opened your heart to him. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May God cause his face to shine upon you. And may he give you peace in Jesus' name. Let's share the grace together. And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, this fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you, everybody. We'll be back online uh, this week on Thursday for Bible study. And keep praying, keep praying, keep praying. We're believing God for great miracles. Share your testimonies with us by email. Send us direct message, whatever you need. Uh, the Lord bless you and keep you as you go through this week. In Jesus' name, amen.